<laughs> on the campaign trail, Donald Trump recently talked about his philosophy on settling lawsuits. When I get sued, I, I take it right all, take it all the way. You know what happens? If you settle suits, you get sued more. It's true. Interesting. We take a closer look at a few cases Trump did settle in the late 2000s. They reveal some things about Trump's business dealings. Trump's wealth is now estimated at $4.5 billion by Forbes. He started making money when he actually owned buildings. But today, nearly 40% of the 62 buildings that bear his name are not owned by Trump. Juliana Goldman is in Washington with our investigation. Juliana, good morning. Good morning. Donald Trump began licensing deals when he started to see the market going soft about 10 years ago. Putting his name on projects but not owning them meant he would not be responsible if the developments failed. The Trump licensing partnership often works like this. A company wants to develop a property and Trump either manages the property or just puts his name on it and gets a fee. Investors say the Trump name was a great selling point and they thought that if it was good enough for Trump, then it must be a safe bet. It was just going to be a, a nice place to go in retirement. William Flint is a retired financial planner who wanted to buy a vacation home for his family. In 2007, after seeing a new development planned for this location in Baja, Mexico, he put down a deposit so he could have a beachfront getaway just one hour from San Diego. It's in Baja, Mexico. Donald Baja Trump plugged the property the in this really promotional video as if he was the builder. I'm very, very proud of the fact that when I build, I have investors that follow me all over. They invest in me, they invest in what I build, and that's why I'm so excited about Trump Ocean Resort. But in fact, he was never the developer. He sold his name for half a million dollars. At a VIP party, condo buyers shared their faith in the project. The Trump name was a big thing for us. You know, we figured we can't go wrong with that. But Flint grew concerned when he didn't see progress. Checked it another time, still nothing was going on. Then came the final notice. We got a letter, I believe, from uh, Trump Baja telling us that the deal wasn't going to go through. They spent all the money. Financiers had pulled out. And the project meant for this location is still a hole in the ground. I lost uh, $168,000. Flint, along with almost 200 other condo buyers, sued to get their money back. How could you lose partnering up with Donald Trump? Donald Trump was an expert in, in these types of projects, or so we thought. Two of Trump's children bought units in the top floors. We invest a lot of time and energy. In Our upfront fee. In a deposition for a lawsuit regarding the property, Trump's son, Donald Trump Jr., conceded that the Trump brand could lead people to think a project was a solid investment. There's one of the things that you've learned through this process is that the Trump name brings stability and or viability to the project. I don't know if it brings stability or viability, but I imagine certain people feel that. We thought that uh, he was running the show. He had skin in the game. But legally, Trump only had his name in the game. His attorney, Alan Garden, says the fact that Trump was not the developer was clearly spelled out in the contract that Flint and others signed. So I understand that people may have been drawn to these projects because of the Trump name, but they're buying luxury, high-end real estate, and it's incumbent upon anyone to be accountable and responsible to read the documents like you would in any significant commercial transaction. In the end, Trump settled the Baja case. Around the same time, there was a 52-floor Trump building in Tampa that was never built, and Trump put his name on this 298-unit development in Fort Lauderdale that he was supposed to manage, but it was taken over by another company. Each project left disgruntled condo buyers who sued Trump, saying they wanted their money back. Some of these projects failed because of the worst economic and real estate crash since the Great Depression. Some people would say that licensing during an economic downturn uh, actually protected Trump, uh, but left investors out in the cold. What do you say to that? I believe, I thought it was brilliant on his part to sort of see the bubble coming uh, and decide to focus more on licensing than development. Uh, I think what he saw were real estate prices at, at all-time highs, and he just didn't see, see the value there. I don't think it left buyers out in the cold. I think buyers each need to make their own decision. Flint says although he received a settlement payment, he still lost six figures. The settlement was for nowhere near 
the amount of money that we had invested in the project. Trump won one lawsuit in Fort Lauderdale where the jury believed he was not responsible and settled two others admitting no wrongdoing. Gail, his attorney, says any money from the Baja deal was eaten up in legal fees.